Yes, it was against Missouri State. Yes, it was a bad opponent. But you know what? You go 21 to 24 for 255 yards and three scores in your very first career college start. Man, you've earned the player of the game. Dallas has won 16 of its last 20 games with Tony Romo at quarterback. The problem is the past four games, Romo has been injured and the Cowboys have lost them all. The crosses are no longer on the A-State helmets. Let's take a close look at what we got here. Now, we still have the initials of the two players that passed away, but there is no cross. Brandon Allen was the key. He really took his game to another level. He struggled down the stretch earlier in the year, but since then he's come through in the clutch. Broke the school record for seven touchdown passes in a game and broke the school program record for 63 touchdowns. The Spoon Man stays hot as he hits a solo shot out to left. Get the spoons out, everyone. Why not? Should I say something? I need, I need him to bring that mic up to the stage. So I, you know, get Coach Anderson, I tap him on the shoulder, I'm like, Coach, can you bring that mic up to the press conference? And Brandon Moss says, hey, Matt, anything you can do? I can do also. Is he homers to center as well? Five to two Cardinals at that point. Since the last time the Lady Red Wolves lost a home basketball game, the Patriots have won the Super Bowl, the Warriors the NBA Finals, and the Royals the World Series. Well, it's appropriate it's Halloween today. This is our Halloween-themed Red Wolves recap. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kamen Enchev. If you take the Red Wolves basketball teams, the football team, and the volleyball team, Arkansas State's a perfect 32-0 in Sunbelt play. I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan, so definitely cheering for him. But I think they win because of the defense. I think Cam Newton's great. But they shut down Tom Brady. Look for more of the same. For Razorback fans, all eyes are on Alex Collins, who has himself a choice. Should I stay or should I go? I sent the video to SportsCenter and they showed it this morning as part of a buzzer beater segment. Ball game is over! That was the voice of A-State legendary broadcaster Bill Keaty, who sadly passed away this morning. I would have loved to see Griffey go unanimous. You know, when I played baseball in middle school, I used to imitate his swing, the sweetest swing. <laughs> Almost. The 15-1 and one Trojans allow a nation low 55.8 points per game. The Red Wolves either didn't know that stat or simply just didn't care. Good evening everyone, I'm Commandant Chev. Both Red Wolves basketball teams are 3-0 in the Sun Belt as they took on rival ULL. It's not a Red Wolves game without John Brady talking to the ref. A-State led by four at the half but would start 0 for 14 from the floor in the second half as ULL would go on a 17-0 run to start the half, but here come the Red Wolves. Devin Carter with the awesome putback. He scored 25. Then Dante Thomas with the jumper. That's good. He added 20. Red Wolves down 58-55. The problem was stopping Sean Long, who taps in his own miss right here. He had 25 and 15. Fast forward to the finish. 15 seconds left. Red Wolves down one. But the missed free throw, Frederick Duray comes up with the offensive rebound. They swing it around off to Sean Gardner with the fake, who takes it to the hole for the three-point play. 71-69 A-State. Everyone's fired up. ULL down two, last chance. Three seconds left. The three's up, and it's no good. The Red Wolves win 71-69. And down tonight, 13 with whatever it was to go, eight minutes to go or whatever the – clock was and to come back and win this game uh, you know our team showed a lot of uh, character and toughness before that Khadija Brown Haywood and the ladies also took on ULL early on Brown Haywood off the dribble and she pulls up for the jumper 2-0 Red Wolves then Drea Gamble on the drive and she dishes it to BIC zone Brittany Fowler in the corner for the three ball Fowler had nine points Time running out in the first quarter, and Brown Haywood hits the jumper to beat the buzzer. She had 25 points and 18 rebounds, a 27-point first quarter for the Red Wolves. Then Fowler with a great pass to Amanda Lawson. She had 22. Second half, Khadija to a cutting Lawson right here for what would be another three-point play. They're fired up right here, the two stars for the day. The Red Wolves win big, 83-56. So to get this win, um, and especially with that margin, play that well defensively against that quality of a team uh, is really good. I, uh, one of the things that was so uneasy about is uh, you know, just how quick their guards are. To the other side of the state, the Razorbacks are coming off a thrilling overtime win over Vandy as the Hogs look for back-to-back -back SEC wins against Mississippi State. And today it was all about the three ball for Arkansas. First half, Jabril Durham with one of his 12 assists to Anthlon Bell, who buries the three. 
he made five threes and scored 25. Then it's Dusty Hannah's with a deep three. He made eight threes on the night, finishing with the game high 26. Then more Razorback threes. This time Durham gets in on the party. That's good. Then some good ball movement, and Anton Beard hits a three of his own. Of course, the Hogs were on fire from downtown. Arkansas makes 16 out of 24 three-pointers. Here's Bell with, how about this, another from the corner. And then back to Hannah's right here. Of course, he'd make another three ball right here. Arkansas wins 82-68 to go to 8-7. and seven. We were fortunate to win the game. We, we, we made some shots, and Dusty, uh, we know when he gets going, he can get it going. Uh, he's always screwed up my practice because he makes multiple shots, and we saw that tonight. Uh, Bell continues to play in a really, really good groove. In big Arkansas football news, Buffalo Bills assistant offensive line coach Kurt Anderson will take over as the new Arkansas offensive line coach. With Anderson's assistance in 2015, the Bills led the NFL with 2,000 432 rushing yards or 152 yards a game. Speaking of Hogs football, how about this? Former Razorback Niall Davis takes the opening kickoff of today's first wildcard playoff game and just bursts through the holes and he's gone to the house for a 106 yard kickoff return touchdown. The longest kick return in a wildcard game. The Chiefs win 30-0. And what a game for the Red Wolves. They're 4-0 oh, yeah. in the Sun Belt. The men's team playing with a lot of heart. Two close wins just yep. this week. Amazing. What a day for them. That's, that's always good news. Yes. Thanks, Common. Stick with us. We'll be back. Well, if you thought the Auburn game a few weeks ago was crazy, this game was even wilder. An instant classic as Arkansas took on Ole Miss. Let's check out the highlights. Here come the Hogs. First quarter play action, and Brandon Allen delivers a strike to Drew Morgan for the touchdown. 7-0 Razorbacks. Those two were just getting started. Second quarter, another play action, and Allen rolls out, and this time he finds Dominic Reed in the end zone. 14-7 Arkansas. Hogs down 24-17 in the third quarter. Allen with another great pass to Jared Cornelius for the touchdown. Allen was so great that an Ole Miss fan actually called the Oxford Police Department and asked, asked to have Allen kicked out of the stadium. Not a joke, folks. One minute left, Hogs down seven, and Allen to Dominic Reed for the game time score. 15 seconds left, fourth and six. Ball near midfield, Ole Miss goes for it, but DJ Dean forces the incomplete pass right here. Big time defense. Hogs have a chance to win it on a last second field goal. Here's the kick, but it would be blocked. Are you kidding me? This game was crazy. The Rebels would start fast in OT. Chad Kelly keeps it for one of his three rushing TDs. 52-45 Ole Miss. But this is where things got really wild. Fourth and 25 for Arkansas. Allen throws across the field to the sideline. The complete pass to Hunter Henry. He's about to go down, but he tosses it backwards. Probably wasn't looking. Alex Collins picks it up near the line of scrimmage. Needing to go 25 yards for the first down. And you know what? He does it, folks. Holy cow. Two plays later, Allen delivers another strike to Morgan for the touchdown. So Hogs down 52-51. Brett Bielema decides to go for two. Looks like Brandon Allen right here, he's going to roll out. Looks like he's sacked. Looks like the game is over. Arkansas loses, but no. Wait a minute. The face mask penalty is called, so the Hogs get another shot. Again, they go for two, and it's fitting. Allen dives in the end zone for the game-winning two-point conversion. Arkansas wins one of the wildest games of the season, 53-52. Checking out the stats, it was all about the passing game. Brandon Allen had threw a career high 442 passing yards and six touchdowns. Drew Morgan had three touchdowns and 122 yards. Trevor Thomas was born with a fused vertebrae in his neck and only one kidney. You, can you move, like can you tilt your head fully on, on the side or no? No, that's as far as I can go. His neurologist who was the spine and vertebrae doctor um, told me from when he was just a little bitty guy that he would always be small, he would always be short, and that he didn't need to play any contact sports. He needed to maybe play golf or, or something like that. But he played soccer anyways. Kind of just made me want to play more, to be honest. I knew some of his conditions. Uh, I found out uh, about his kidney at a tournament. Uh, we were playing in Memphis and he got hit and uh, he started spitting up blood. Well, you know, I didn't think it was that serious till after the game he told me he had one kidney. I said, you know, Trevor, I think we should have taken you out of that kidney, but that's who Trevor is. You know, he's not going to have a medical complication uh, pushing back. And soon his doctor agreed too. 
We never told the, his doctor until he injured the kidney and then we, we kind of had to. So um, he basically said that it's made him stronger and now that he's doing so well with it, let him keep playing. And the soon to be Greene County Tech senior wants to keep playing for a long time. Yes, I want to play professionally too. That's possible. Like the MLS or something like that? Yeah, it doesn't even have to be a big league. I just want to play. Yeah, I think he can get, he has the work ethic. That That's one thing that he has that most kids are in it don't. He, he has the work ethic, he has the passion, he has the determination. So far as he has his mindset to it, I think he can accomplish it. But this fight hasn't been just about Trevor. It makes me think about other people too, because I want to show that people like me in my situation can do the same thing. But it hasn't always been easy on his family. Um, it's really hard and a lot of people don't agree with what I've done, but he is the type of, of well, he was the type of child and now he's the, the type of young adult that if I didn't let him do it, he's going to do it anyway. I mean, he's going to find a way to play soccer. Trevor was all state as a junior and so far Williams Baptist has expressed some interest when it comes to college soccer. One boy who hasn't let anything stand in the way of his dreams. Tom and Enchev, Region 8 Sports. Jeff Pagan turned 58 today, but unlike most people his age, he's a national champion powerlifter, a journey he started many years ago. First started lifting weights in uh, Mexico. I got married and my wife and I went to Mexico. We served there as missionaries for 17 years. The missionary that I trained under uh, was actually a head football coach of a local university. Pagan bought his own weight set from Walmart, and when the coach saw his progress, he asked him to be the team's weight coach. Pagan's team won five straight championships, and from there, opportunities opened up to travel around Mexico as a weight coach. Myself as a missionary, this was very interesting. They, they would always ask me, well, how much do you charge for this training? I said, oh, no, no charge. It's absolutely free. I said, just for every 45 minutes of teaching that I do, I want 15 minutes of personal time with your players. And they were all like, hey, that's great. Pagan came home to Jonesboro in 1999, where he continued to lift weights, but never competitively, until we saw in the newspaper that in 2011, a man his age and his weight class had set the Arkansas bench press record of 285 pounds. And I looked at that and I thought, well, that's strange, because I was doing three sets of 10 at 275 in just my regular workout. So I thought it was a misprint. But I investigated and found out, no, that that was the Arkansas state record for my age group and my weight class. And so uh, I jumped in, started competing. In his first meet, he broke that record and eventually went on to Raw Nationals, where he won first and set two more records in the process. Pagan only continues to get better because he's still relatively new at the deadlift and squat weights. I, I really hope that within the next two years, if I can maintain the course that I'm on, when I turn 60, uh, my existing lifts right now, I'll hold three of the four possible world records for my age group and weight class. Pagan does all this in his free time. His day jobs include working at Pagan's Jewelry, driving school buses, and being a full-time pastor. But he's showing no signs of slowing down. My, my first and foremost goal is to stay healthy. <laughs> uh, after that, I would truly love to, to go to an actual world competition. Pagan benches 352.5 pounds, his deadlift is 462 pounds, and his squat is 446 pounds. One man that proves age is just a number. Kamenenchev, Region 8 Sports.